whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's Holy Word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the
will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. All right, y'all help us. I want to hear you real loud. Here we go. Oh, I will worship, I will worship with all of my heart, all of my heart, and I'm going to praise you, I will praise you with all of my strength, all of my strength, Lord, I will seek you, I will seek you for all of my days, all of him and his sickness went away and just like he healed that man he can take your pain away this is power so much power i know there's power in the name in the name of jesus there's power so much power i know there's power the Lord has brought you through you ought to stand up on your feet tell the world I'm a witness to well you ought to clap your hands tell the world there is no doubt through all of my troubles and trials Jesus has brought me out cause there's power so much power no oh, there's power in the name in the name of Jesus, there's power, so much power, I know there's power in His name. Oh, well, if you really know that the Lord has brought you through, you ought to stand up on your feet, tell the world I'm a witness to. Well, you ought to clap your hands, tell the world there is no doubt. 
Through all of your troubles and trials, Jesus will bring you out. Cause there's power, so much power. I know there's power in the name, in the name of Jesus. There's power, so much power. I know there's power in his name. Oh, now a man came unto Jesus. He said, Lord, I want to be healed. My body's all full of sores. He said, Lord, I want to live. But Jesus reached down and touched him. And that sickness went away. And just like he healed that man, he can't take your pain away. Because there's power, so much power. I know there's power. In the name, in the name of Jesus, there's power, so much power, I know there's power in His name. Lying there in the dust A woman come to the well With a bucket, you know But she left with a river in her soul He'll give you a miracle He'll give you a miracle He'll give you a miracle Jesus is a miracle man. Give it sight to the blind, turn water to wine. It's all at his command. Giving life to Jerry's daughter, raising the dead, walking on water. Jesus is a miracle man. He He'll give you a miracle. Yes, He'll give you a miracle. Jesus is a miracle man. waters of life they almost drown you just reach up to that reaching down hand cause Jesus is a miracle man oh he'll give you a miracle he'll give you a miracle he'll give you a miracle a miracle man healing lepers that cry have pity on us give it sight to Bartimaeus lying there in the dust a woman come to the well with the bucket you know but she left with a river in her soul he'll give you a miracle Almost every time I sing this song, but you know that last verse, it's so powerful. Because you know, as we go through life, there's always challenges, there's always troubles. A lot, there's a lot of times things just don't go like we planned. But you know, Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And all we got to do is just reach out to Him. Whatever situation we find ourselves in, 
Whatever we find ourselves facing, he said just to reach out to me. And he's there for us. When heartache and pain, they're all around you. Troubled waters of life, they try to drown you. Just reach up to that reaching down hand. Jesus is a miracle man. Oh, he'll give you a miracle. He'll give you a miracle. He'll give you a miracle. Jesus is a miracle man.
blessed assurance Jesus is mine He's been my fourth man in the fire time after time born of His Spirit washed in His more than enough. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. 
and I'll heal their lands. It comes down to us. It's not on God, right? So here we go one more time. Let's say, I saw. Oh, I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust in God. He's my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. God glory and honor in this place. Why don't you just stand to your feet? I'm going to do a brother Jason right now. Why don't you just stand to your feet, raise your hand before the Lord and give him praise in the house tonight. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. You're merciful, Father. You're loving. You're kind. Father, you're gracious, Lord, and it's by your grace. Father, Lord, it's by your tender mercies, Father, that we've come into this house tonight. Lord, you could have left us lost and undone without you. But, Lord, you loved us enough that you left your heavenly throne. Lord, you robed yourself in a robe of flesh. And, Lord, you allowed them, Father, Lord, to despitefully treat you. 
Lord, you took our hell upon you, Lord, so that we might have heaven, Lord, that you created. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? You may be seated. Let me remind you that service will continue tomorrow night. And let me make this announcement before I bring Brother Glenn up. Uh, Sister Pam Hubble uh, come through her surgery and was doing really well. Uh, pain was at a minimal, and, and mostly the pain that she did have was associated with the surgery, the surgery site itself. Yesterday I announced that they were needing some ladies to stay with her during the day, and uh, things have changed since last night. Uh, they thought that the, her sisters were going to have to be with their mom because uh, their helper was, uh, their think, they were thinking was going to have to have a pacemaker or a defibrillator put in, but that's changed. They said, you're welcome to come to visit, but they don't need you to come to stay just to stay with her because her sisters are going to take care of that. But they wanted you to know just how much they appreciate your willingness to do that. And we thank the Lord uh, that it seems like that uh, the surgery was successful uh, and that uh, she said or he said that the burning sensation up into her back was uh, gone. And uh, so we just praise the Lord for that and pray for a quick recovery. And I think that's all the announcements that I'm going to uh, take care of at this moment in time other than again, remember 7 o'clock tomorrow night we will continue with the revival. And tonight... What happened to that microphone that uh, Brother Glenn uses? All right. So if you're glad to have Brother Glenn and his precious wife, Sister Doris, would you give them a good hand clap? Did he preach last night? Brother Preston Hubble told me to tell you, Brother Glenn, that that was the best he's ever heard you preach. So if you think that was something, tonight's going to get better. Right, Brother Glenn? Uh, and uh, Brother Joe Simpson, uh, he wanted me to tell all of you and Brother Glenn that he loved you uh, and that he misses you. Uh, Brother Joe had to have two stents put in uh, here a couple weeks ago, and he goes next week to have a couple of more stents. And they're in a, a building project. They're building the, uh, the sanctuary now on top of where they were meeting and uh, we, we thank the Lord for that, but be in prayer for Brother Joe. And right now, we're going to bring on the right reverend, <laughs> Brother Glenn Wilson. We're glad that you're here on April the 5th. We're so glad. Yeah. Caught, <laughs> my wife caught that last night. Did she? Yeah. Bless her heart. Yeah. She shouldn't have done you that way. She shouldn't have done me that way. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. I just greet you in the name of Jesus tonight, and uh, my, what a crowd for such a threat of weather, uh, the threat of weather out there, but uh, coming out and being with us tonight, right? Yeah, well, I've been the wife, caught some of it coming over, hallelujah. Hey, can you stand a little humor tonight for a preach? All right. Uh, there was this... Uh, story that I heard. Now, this, this is not reality. It said that uh, a lady, you know, died and went to heaven. She got there at the pearly gates and said the uh, uh, angel there said, look, said, uh, before you come in, uh, you've got to spell something. She said, well, what do I got to spell? She said, spell, he said, spell love. She said, well, sure, L-O-V-E. And he said, enter into the joys of the Lord. And uh, the angel said unto her, so the keeper of the gate said to her, said, hey, he said, I've got to take care of some things. Would you mind maintaining the gate till I get back? I won't be going long. She said, sure. And uh, guess what? Her ex-husband showed up. <laughs> and he stood there and said, oh, boy. He said, I made it to heaven. She said, not quite. You got to spell something before you go through those gates. And he said, Sure. What should I spell? She said, Spell Czechoslovakia. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. 
we have a lot of fun, don't we, church? Praise God. Uh, every night's different. I appreciate the compliments about last night. That was all God. I give Him the glory. But every night's differently, isn't it? Amen. Every night's different. And tonight, I feel like the Lord's chosen uh, me to preach to you. And in Second Chronicles chapter 7, it's familiar scripture, and uh, verse 11 Second Chronicles, or rather, uh, Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse thirteen. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, mine, uh, now, okay. now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayers that is made in this place. I don't have my, my helpers with me. Uh, Father, we thank you. Glory to God. We thank you, thank you, thank you for all these precious people, this wonderful pastor and his wife, Lord, that they believe in revival. They've assembled out, Father, and oh, what an awesome and great privilege you've given me, God, to stand before them and proclaim the precious Word of God. I need your help, Father. I need your help, and I, I trust you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If my people... You're, you and I are His people, aren't we? Are you, are you God's people? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. How many knows our land needs to be healed? It needs to be healed. We've paid, we've, uh, paid a lot of money, done a lot of things to put the right men and women in office in, in Washington, D.C., but our land's in trouble. You know that, and I know that. But you know, it's something that God doesn't look for them to straighten out our land. He looks to His people. If we only knew the awesome privilege and responsibility that God bestows upon you and I to turn things around, we can complain, we can, we can you know, be political, have battles about it, but friend, the best thing you and I can do to turn the tide is to pray, to pray, hallelujah. And here's what I want to talk about. You and I need to constantly build altars that we might alter God. Now think about what I said. All through the Old Testament, they build altars to talk to God. We don't do that physically today, but we, we, we pray, right? And isn't it marvelous that God said, hey, if my people who call by my name shall seek my face, he's saying you can alter what's going on. Isn't that marvelous? Think about that. You and I that are gods, we can alter things with our prayers, the prayer of faith. Look at great men in the Word of God, how they altered things just because they built an altar or they prayed to God. Nineveh's a great example. Jonah come preaching to Nineveh and said, Hey, in 40 days God's going to destroy this place. Well, the Bible said that the king went and put sackcloth and, and set in ashes. And he commanded everybody to do the same. And he said something like, Who knows that God won't change his mind? We're going to alter the hand of God if we can. That's what he was saying. 
God has instructed a prophet to tell us that in 40 days there's a death sentence on us. And we're going to build an all, or we're going to sit, we're going to put on sackcloth and we're going to sit in ashes and we're going to pray and alter the hand of God if we can. We're going to get God to change his mind. How many knows God can change his mind? And what thrills me about what I'm preaching and what I know is who am I? Who are we that a God of the whole universe will listen to us? And if there's enough faith in what we're, we're doing and projecting, God will answer our prayer. And God can be altered. God can change his mind. How many knows that it worked? It worked. God gave them a reprieve of that. And they were not destroyed. You see, church, uh, uh, if I could, I, I, I'm try, I want to try so hard to get this to register in your heart tonight, how important you are to alter things. Washington, D.C. doesn't have uh, the answer. Uh, those politicians we put in, all they want to do is, is just throw mud, fight, be, and, and fight for partisanship. The illegal immigrants that are coming over invading our land, I don't mind them coming. Listen, uh, if I was in Russia, I spent somewhere around three weeks over there one time. If I was in Russia, I definitely want to come to the United States. That's how depressing it is in that place. So I don't mind that, but, but I believe they ought to come legally. My nephew just married a girl from the Philippines, and he took months and much paperwork and money to finally get her legally called an American. So church, we're in serious trouble. This thing's going to escalate worse than we think. There's a plan behind all of this. Amen? And bless their heart. Listen, they're going to have to have a job. They're going to want a vehicle. They're want to, they'll, they'll be wanting to, uh, education, lands. Amen. And we, the taxpayers, friend, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I hate to think it, but it could really get bad for us. So there's got to be some changes. When something's wrong, it needs to be changed. How many can say amen? Now, I'm not trying to make enemies tonight. I've not mentioned one politician, have I? But you know, if you've got any sense at all, you know things aren't going the right way. And our land's in trouble. And they, nobody can work it out except the church. We can petition God and alter the plans that are going on in men's, men's minds and even God's mind. Hallelujah. Think about Hezekiah. My. A prophet comes into Hezekiah and said, Get your house in order. You're going to die in 15 days. Hezekiah, the Bible says he turned his face to the wall. He built him an altar. And he said something like this, Oh God, uh, look how I've walked upright before you and kept your commandments. He threw his track record right in the face of God. You live that good? Can, do you live that good that you could uh, counterattack God with that? Of course, they were under the law. And do you know before the prophet got out of that place, God told him to go back in and tell him, said, I've heard your prayer and I've added 15 years to you. My God in heaven. What I'm trying to preach to you tonight, friend, we have the ability to alter even God's hand on things. Now, God's an all-wise God. He's not going to listen to a, a stupid prayer. I mean, there's things you know that God's not going to listen to, but if it's, if it's in reasoning and it betters the kingdom of God or it betters uh, things, friend, God's all for it. Can you say amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There was a man one time that stood before God fighting a battle. His name was Joshua. And he wanted to win that battle so bad 
that he cried out for God in so many words to stop the hand of time. In other words, the sun's going down. I want to prevail over my enemy before the sun goes down. And, and would you do something? God stopped the hand of time. My God, if God stopped the hand of time for one man in a battle, look what he can do when God's people set their mind to seek God. Hallelujah. Prayer is the most necessary thing that we could talk about tonight. It's the most necessary thing you and I could do. D.L. Moody made a statement. I read it. It goes something like this. He said, I would rather to teach one man or woman how to pray than ten men or women how to preach the gospel. It's so valuable. It's so important. And many of us treat our life, our, our, our prayer life so loosely, friend. We, 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 don't, we don't elevate it. We don't consider what a privilege it is and what it can accomplish, glory to God. We only pray for our needs, our, 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 our immediate needs, friend. But I'm going to tell you, God wants us praying for the problems that are going on. And listen, by that, God can turn things around. Moses, Moses was favored of God. God got so sick and tired of Israel, belly aching and murmuring and complaining. Right? And he said something like this, I repent that I've ever made man. <laughs> Talking to Moses. And he said, I'll destroy them and I'll build me another nation. In so many words. But Moses had the audacity to stand before God, and, 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 and you, might, you might as well say altar. He was praying. He was seeking God. Look what will happen. You, you brought him out of the, out of the waste, hell, and wilderness, uh, or, or out of Egypt into this waste, hell, and wilderness, and they see the, the graves and such, and what, what will they think about you? And friend, God repented of his anger and his words. Why? Because one man altered him. Everybody say, altered. If Benny and I had a conversation right now and he wanted me to go his way, he would try his best to alter my thinking his way. That's what we're talking about. We have the awesome privilege to alter God. So when you... When you think about belly aching about what's going on, friend, I, 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 you know, we, instead of doing that, why don't we just pray? Why don't we just bring it to God and alter the hand of God? Hallelujah. My oldest daughter, you all prayed for her last night. Matter of fact, let me tell you, she just landed in Arkansas. She's scheduled to preach tomorrow, tomorrow night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. And she's able, she was able to go. Thank you for praying for her. When she was pregnant with her first, second child, she went to the doctor. I believe it's, uh, I don't know if she's having complications or whatever, or rather it was a routine checkup. And the, and the doctors examined her, and they said, in your womb with that baby is a tumor about the size of a grapefruit. And it's attached to that, what, a umbilical, umbilical cord? And said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to starve that baby to death. And we recommend you get a, an abortion. Abort that baby. Well, Dana, being brought up under me and my, my teachings, she said, we've not been taught that way. We don't believe in abortion. And she said, if you don't mind... I'm going to talk to the family. We're going to pray to God. Isn't that a marvelous child? Amen. And she called me, discussed it with me. Her mother knew it. Oh, all the family went to pray. And friend, let me tell you something other. God delivered that lady. And you ought to see the young lady that she birthed. She's a living doll, bless God. I call her a miracle child. Why? Because the hand, of, the hand of God was altered. We altered God. Not that God was doing it to her, but God could do something about it. Who's going to help us? Who's going to help our land? Who's 
going to turn things around? Only God. And God, we're waiting on God, but God's waiting on us. You see, he put an awesome privilege in your, in your behalf. Well, why, Brother Wilson, if he knows what's going on, why don't he just do something about it without us? Because that's the way God requires it. He wants to involve us. If every healing you got, you just said, God, heal me, and zap, you're healed. If ever delivered you, God, and you said, God, deliver me, zap, you're delivered. Then you'd be like a bird in the nest that when they hear their mother coming, they just open their mouth and start chirping for that worm or, or that insect. But God chooses to involve you and I so that our wisdom with, will grow. Our relationship with, with him will grow. Our faith will get stronger. Amen. An altar to alter the things of God. I don't know about you, but I count it seriously. That God would use you and I. That he could alter things on this earth. Amen. We're in revival. And we've crossed over the, the mandate and what else could God do for us? We just keep altering God in the hand of God. Amen? He can do it all. He can do it all. And I'm looking for him, for him to do that. Glory to God. God loves to help his people. And God will help his people. You say, well, Brother Wilson, does he do it every time? Well... David sinned against God, got a woman pregnant. She had a baby, and God speaks up and says, I'm going to take the baby from you. I mean, remember that story. Well, David's going to try to alter God, you see. He's done hurt from God, so David's going to pray and alter God if he can. And he spends all night in fasting try, in his altar trying to alter the words of God and the, and, and, and the death of the child that's coming. But how many knows the next morning the child died? He got up and he washed his face and he ate. They said, they, they asked him, the men with him asked him, said, hey, while the, while the child was, a, a, you know, sick, you fasted, you prayed, but now that he's, uh, uh, you know, dead, why you're, uh, you're, 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 you know, you're eating, you're worshiping God. He said, hey, he can't come to me, but I can go to him. Hmm? When you're in that state of trying to wrestle with God and all of the plans of God, I'm going to tell you the mighty wisdom of God can kick in. Amen. And if you're praying wrong, God can readjust that if you've got a spiritual intellect about it. Hallelujah. But God requires that of you and I. Church, how much aimless time do we spend on trivial things? When we ought to be about the, the weightier matters of seeking the face of God for that world out there. I have found out something about God. If I'll forget about my ailments, my problems in general, and just, you know, pray for the necess ne necessary things, a lot of times, a lot of those smaller issues just clear up. Could it be that God says, hey, he's working on the big issue. I'll just go ahead and touch his body and heal him. I I'll just go ahead and deliver him in that area. Because he don't, spend, he don't spend all of his time on himself praying. Amen every now and then would help me here. How many believes what I'm preaching? Pastor, the awesome privilege. I mean, it just thrills my soul. It thrills my soul to know that God's put me in a position that, hey, you want to change things? Alter. Pray. You want the world situation? Quit talking. Quit throwing mud. Quit, 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 quit all your, your fleshly uh, 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 fighting and just pray. 
You can pray people out of that White House. You can pray people out of that position. You can pray things around. But God requires to hear from His church because we're so powerful. We're so needful to the hand of God. Why He arranged it that way, I don't know. I don't know completely. But I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad to be a part of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus Himself, He tried to alter God's decision. Remember that? He was headed to Calvary. He's praying in that garden. He was suffering in the flesh, and he knew what else he had to deal with. He was dreading it just like the flesh would. And he cries out to the Father. He said, Father, just let this cup of death pass from me. I'd like for you to alter that out of my life. What if he'd have done that? You and I wouldn't have a chance at all. But it was, the, it was the weakness at that hour in the flesh that Jesus was dealing with. But common sense kicks back in, and he said, But Father, not my will, but thy will be done. So it went God's way. He went all the way to the cross for you and I. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. That sickness you're dealing with, friend, you could, you could alter that. I know the devil puts sickness on us, but how many knows God's the healer? Whatever situation you're in, friend, if you'll just use your altar for God to alter the plan of the devil or alter the plan of this or that, God can turn it around for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prodigal son came back to his father. He said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no wor more worthy to be called thy son, but make me as a hard servant. But the father had compassion on him, restored him. Sinner, tonight, did you know you can, you, you're, you're headed for hell. I don't say that with pleasure. I, I hate to see that. I don't want a dog to go to hell to you. But you're headed for hell. And the only way, listen, the only one can alter that is, is Jesus Christ. And the only way you can do anything about it is make yourself an altar and pray for God's forgiveness. Hallelujah. And God will put you in the Lamb's book of life. What do you need altered tonight? Everybody's got a problem, don't they? Everybody's got a problem. But he, he took it a little further and he said, I'll heal your land. You can, you can think outside the box. You, you, you think on a minor level, but I can heal your land if you think I can. If, you, if you'll build an altar, if you'll pray. There ain't nothing God's people can't do if they pray and seek God. Peter was in jail. The church, the church of God. They could have said, well, let's get a lawyer and get him out. That's the carnal way. We think that way a lot. Let's get up a petition and we'll march. We'll march. I get so sick of the marches, don't you? The protesting going on. And church, I don't know about you, but you know, I welcome, I, I, I want to reiterate this. I welcome every soul that wants to come to America legally. But for them to come here and proclaim the, right, the, the same rights and protest America, now they're screaming, if you've seen it, they're screaming death to America, death to Israel on our streets in Detroit, Michigan. We can alter things like that. you believe that? God can alter things. What's God trying to do in New York City? An earthquake. How, they haven't had an earthquake in what? Yeah. As we approach the end time, watch climatic conditions get crazy. They're already doing it. 
watch earthquakes in divers places uh, and, and, and things that are coming upon the world. Why? Because God's trying to alter man from his evil ways. If God can't get you to pray with his love and mercy, God can send hardship on you to alter you. To do his will. America, church, I don't mean to be a preacher of doom tonight, but we're in for some hard times in America because we don't have no people that want to or know how to alter God. Not many, let's say that. We, even the church, want to go on with our normal activity long as we got money in our pocket, a good job, good health, everything's going good, we ain't going to rock the boat. We ain't going to get concerned, but when it comes home to us, watch it when a gas, when a gas shortage comes. Everybody will take their red gas cans down to the station and they'll stand there and fight for, for the lineup. We panic. It's time that we realized some of our purpose in life. Is this all right for tonight? Amen. And we begin to work toward altering the things of God. I'm not saying that God does it all, but how many knows it has to come through God? Whatever he, you know, allow or not allow. And, and isn't it something God's looking at the church are you going to petition me? I'll alter it if you'll petition it. I will. I'll do something about it if you'll petition me. Am I all right, Pastor, on this? I mean, a man like Moses could stand before God and millions of people that God's mad at, and I'm, he's going to destroy them. His anger is kindled, and one man, one man, has the audacity to realize that, hey, I can move God. I can alter God with my prayer. You ought to consider your prayer so important. My God, you wouldn't miss it, friend. You ought to consider your prayer one of the weapons that the devil flees from. I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how good you can sing, how good you can preach, how good you can do anything. The devil quakes when you know how to pray. He doesn't want to know how much authority we've got. Do you realize how much authority you've got? He stripped that devil and gave the church power and authority. All that devil can do is tempt us, threaten us. But you have the power to stand bold and say, devil, you know, I get, a, I get, I, I, I get a little vexed sometimes the way people pray for healing and stuff. We pray around sister so-and-so, Lord, you know her, and she's a good soul, and Lord, I just pray that you would heal her, you know. Well, that might be all right, but what about just stepping up there with the power and authority of God, and like God's given you, say, in the name of Jesus, sickness, I rebuke you according to the Word of God. You cannot, you cannot stay in this body I command you to leave by the power and authority in that name that Jesus gave me to cast out devils and lay on the hands and the sick recover. I command you to leave. What prayer would God, what prayer would God honor more? We don't have to beg him or, or rehearse what he's done for us or what we want him to do. He knows the situation. Just take authority of it and command it. Amen. They said there were some men praying, praying to cast out a devil out of somebody up in Barbell Camp meeting one year. And they, they, if I can get this right, said they was praying over that person, you know, and said this one, one guy said uh, uh, something like, you know, oh, devil, would you please come out of him? Now, that ain't no prayer. How many knows that? Maybe that's not exactly the word you use, but, you know, just, oh, man, I ain't going to pat a pat, patty cake around that devil. I know my power and my authority. I'm not big-headed tonight. I'm not, I'm not above you or anybody else. Friend. I've just read in the book how much power he's given me, and I hate to waste it. Yeah. 
we could get together and petition God. And I do. God sent Holy Ghost revival in the White House. That which is crooked, God makes straight. That which is wrong, Father, make it right. Send strong, strong Holy Ghost conviction upon our leaders. Men and women that we put in office, supposed to be the best brains out there. My God, my daughters could run the White House better than they're doing. You can't fire me, you didn't hire me. <laughs> and God will listen to us. But he's waiting on the church. For you and I, he said, my people, I'm so proud I'm one of his people, aren't you? My people will pray. That, 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 I don't know what that does to you, but here's what it does to me, church. I think about what he's saying. I'm his. I'm his people. And he said, if you, Glenn Wilson, if you'll pray, seek my face. For seek your wicked ways. Clear, it, clear yourself out with me. And said, I'll, I'll hear from heaven. I'll heal the land. God knows our land needs to be healed. Do you need to be healed here tonight? Our singers, would you come, please? Let's, let's get ready for all to call here. You can, you can alter the hand of God tonight. You can, you, can, you can alter the hand of God. You can alter the hand of the devil. If you'll instruct your prayer right. And let there be faith in that prayer. And authority. And belief. Hallelujah. God could do great wonders. Would you stand to your feet tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you like what we've had for you tonight. It's what I believe God gave me. I found out a long time ago, revivals every night's different. One night you're crying, next night you're shouting. One night it's a sobering thought to make you think, and then next night it's a high message to make you shout. I never know what he's going to give us. I just try to obey him. God, we're able to alter the hand of God. We're able to see our land do better. We're able, and God's waiting for us to help him. How many believe that? If you don't know Jesus tonight, these altars are open. The only way you're going to alter yourself from going to hell is to come and pray. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and he'll save you. Hallelujah. As they sing, these altars are open. We want you to come. Glory to God. Let's agree together
try to stop us, but the church of Jesus is still alive, like a
Well, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Yes, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Yeah, be all right. Be all right. Yeah, be all right. Now, God told Moses to lead his people out. But Pharaoh's heart was hard and he thought he'd give them the route. He'd chase them all down to the Red Sea shore. And then he wouldn't worry about Moses anymore. But Moses stretched his rod out over the sea. And God answered Moses with a kind, gentle breeze. I can see Moses now with a smile on his face. We're telling God's people with this gentle grace. Well, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Yes, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. fight the giant and everybody laughed at such a funny little sight a little shepherd boy armed only with a sling beside the mighty Goliath such a puny little thing but David said she come to me with spear and a sword but I come to you in the name of the Lord he put in a stone and he gave it a fling and when he left his hand, David, he began to sing. Well, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Yes, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling that everything's going to be the greatest story of them all how jesus was a dying and hell was having a ball the demons were rejoicing they thought they had won the war but soon they would not be laughing anymore on that first easter morning when the sun woke up the earth the caverns of the deep they opened up as to give birth to a resurrected savior with healing in his wings so my little children rise and sing well i've got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right yes i've got a feeling that everything's gonna be Everything's going to be all right. Yeah, be all right. Be all right. Yeah, be all right. And now for the greatest story of them all. How Jesus was a dying and hell was having a ball. The demons were rejoicing. They thought they had won the war. But soon they would not be laughing anymore. On that first Easter morning, when the sun woke up the earth, the cabins of the deep, they opened up as to give birth to a resurrected Savior with healing in his wings. So mighty host of children, rise and sing, sing it. I've got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. Yes, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Yeah, be all right. Be all right. Thank mm -hmm. you.
the Piper tried Potty laughed at such a funny little sight The little shepherd boy Armed only with a sling Beside the mighty Goliath Such a puny little thing But David said I come to me with a spear and a sword But I come to you In the name of the Lord When he put in a stone And he gave it a thing and when he lift his hand, David, he began to sing. Well, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Yeah, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Talk a while. Y'all go ahead and play. Y'all go ahead and play. The other day while I was on the mail route, I began to think about David. And I began to think about that battle that he was about to get into. You know what David did when he saw that giant? The Bible tells us that he went to the creek and he picked up five smooth stones. And I begin to think about those five smooth stones. You know, those stones had been laying there ever since God created the heavens and the earth. Before the Philistine army ever came to that valley, before David ever saw the giant, the water that flowed out of that mountainside began to work on that rock, began to form that rock to just the perfect size and just the perfect form. But David was looking for it. But you know why it was there? Because God, who is an all-knowing God, knew that one of these days, a little boy that had a heart for God was going to be facing a giant like he had never faced before. I want you to know something. God already knows about the battles that you're getting ready to face. And God's already prepared the answer for you. God's already got the stone in place. He's been preparing you for such a time as this. Can you give God glory? in this house everything is going to be alright if you continue to trust in the hand of an almighty all seeing, all knowing all powerful God it's going to be alright look at your neighbor and tell him it's going to be alright see it sister Chris Well, Jesus was dying and hell was having the ball. All the demons were rejoicing, they thought they had won the war. The truth they could not be laughing anymore. On that first Easter morning, when the sun woke up the earth, the caverns of the deep, Glory they opened up that stupid birth to a resurrected Savior with healing in his wings. So mighty host of children, rise and sing. Well, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Yes, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Neighbor, tell them it's gonna be all right. Hallelujah! 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 The devil don't like it, but that's all right. Yeah, greater is he 
that sin us and he that's in the world. There ain't a devil in hell that can stop the church. Jesus said upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not. Somebody shout it, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not prevail. We're winners. We've read the back of the book. We find ourselves in the book of Revelation. We're in that city that God made and is coming down from heaven. Adorned like a bride, adorned for a husband. We're going to win if we hold on. We're going to win. We may have to walk through troubles. We may have to walk through the flood. We may have to walk through the fire. But we're made overcomers by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. The devil would try to get us to shut up. But I'm here to tell the devil that God, well, God, God has already given us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. I wish somebody would give him glory in this house. And now for the greatest story of them all, how Jesus was a dying. Did you notice he was a dying? And the hell was having a ball. The demons were rejoicing. They thought they had won the war, but soon they would not be laughing anymore. On that first Easter morning, when the sun woke up the earth, the caverns of the deep, they opened up past to give birth to a resurrected Savior with healing in his wings. So mighty host of children, rise and sing. Well, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. I listened as a man cried out to his God in wood and stone. And it broke my heart to see 
every tear that he shed alone. For I knew that it was hopeless, and he would not receive an answer from the gods that he sent that cannot.
troubles that Satan has planned for us, but hold on. Paul said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Aren't you glad God's got something better for us? One more time, give him a good hand clap of praise in this house. How many has been blessed by the word of God that Brother Glenn preach tonight amen now give God a better hand clap than you did for brother Glenn because it's all about him would you raise your right hand tonight the Lord bless you and keep thee may the Lord make his face to shine upon thee 
and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Friend, in this world, you're not going to have peace, but you can have peace in Jesus. The doctor, they, the only thing they can do for you typically is listen to you talk and prescribe a pill. But he's the prince of peace. He's the prince of peace. He's the ruler of it. And he wants you to have it. Tonight as we stand and be dismissed in a word of prayer, let me see if I can get to my notes. Remember again, Brother Joe Simpson. and Remember Laura Patterson. Remember Jason Brown and Burl King. Uh, continue to pray for Sister Pam and for Barbara Kuntz. Remember Carolyn Von Linger. Remember the John Carrier family. John passed away earlier today. And uh, so remember him. Remember Larry, or that family. Remember Larry Carrier. Continue to pray for the Montgomery family. Continue to pray for Brother Jason's mom. That's uh, She was having surgery as we was having church. So her name is Willie Smith. So remember her. Remember Patty Johnson's sister. Remember Tony Tillett. Remember Cherry Sims and Dennis. Remember Pauline and Polly Roy. Remember also Josh Payton. Uh, continue to pray for Brenda Cummins. Somebody say God is able. God is able. Oh, Lord, God is able. Remember Sister Cheryl Brown and Sister Alma Wiltshire. And there's several of you that have got to have tests and more that's got to have surgery. But he's the great physician. Amen. He's the great physician. Would you stand with us tonight as we pray over these needs and pray over the offering? Remember service tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Father in heaven, Lord, you know what you've done here tonight. Lord, you've heard and you've seen. Lord, I ask you to bless Brother Glenn, Father, and Lord, as preachers, sometimes it feels like even though we've done the best we can that maybe we've just not hit the mark. But, Lord, you've told us in your word that your word would not return unto you void. But, Lord, you would send it forth and it would accomplish everything that you've purposed. And, Lord, it doesn't matter, Father, our opinions. Father, it matters, O oh God, that your word is like seed. And, Lord, it grows and it grows and it produces fruit. Now, Lord, I pray your blessing upon everyone that's come tonight. I pray, Father, that you would meet us, O oh God, in the midst of our situations. And, Lord, take our test and our testing grounds, Father, Lord, and make them testimonies. Lord, I do have a feeling that everything's going to be all right. That's not to say that we're not going to face the devil. That's not to say that there's not going to be troubles. But, Lord, what that's to say is if we hold on to that unseen hand, Lord, you're going to carry us on until we come into your presence. Now, Father, we pray your blessings upon everyone. Lord, as we depart from this place, bless the offering, Lord. Keep us, Father, in your care, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.